So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the second round of our MQA study group, Mobile Quality Assurance, where we have some exciting announcements uh, for some of the new features that we just released here in Q4. My name is Roger Snook. I'm the Worldwide Mobile Enablement Leader uh, in uh, IBM Rational. And joining me today, and I'll, uh, we'll put him on audio a little bit later, is Sanji Alwis, from, our technology partner from Aquaz. And Sanji and I will take you through some of the new uh, features in 20 minutes or less and then open it up for questions. Now, if you have not seen Mobile Quality Assurance before, uh, then at the bottom of the slide is a prerequisite if you uh, care to visit that link. Uh, you can download the slides, by the way, in the webcast. If you click on the folder icon on your left-hand side of your meetings, you can uh, see the first entry in that list is the 2014 Q4 NQA study group. Please go ahead and just download the slides from there. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, it will also be posted up uh, as a link on the developer works as well. All lines have been muted so that we can get through the core content here. And then we're going to open up the lines for question and answer later. And we should have plenty of time for that since uh, some of these speakers are pretty simple to consume. So, uh, so again, welcome to the uh, MQA study group. Now, uh, just a, two slides of a quick recap on mobile quality assurance. This is a product that we released just before the, uh, or just around the uh, Innovate conference. And it comes in two flavors. One is available as a software as a service, and that's IBM Mobile Quality Assurance Service on Bluemix. And when you log into Bluemix, you'll see that uh, little uh, sort of radar and check mark uh, icon to initiate your service, and that's where to take advantage of that capability. And the only prerequisite is to have Bluemix access. The other way to consume this is through uh, an on-premise version, that is uh, bits that you download and install on your site uh, or at the customer site. And that product has been newly named IBM Mobile First Platform Quality Assurance. Uh, it was formerly known as Work Like Quality Assurance, uh, IBM, uh, as we're rebranding and refocusing our mobile strategy um, and putting the wood behind the arrow, we are naming this IBM Mobile First Platform Quality Assurance. Now, both products uh, are, you know, same features. Uh, so whether or not you choose the software as a service or on-premise, same capabilities, uh, that includes the, uh, the integration to Rational Team Concert or the DevOps Services integration, which for IBMers we did highlight recently on a webcast with Jean-Louis Marchal. Uh, it's really just a customer choice. Uh, you know, customers I talk to who prefer to do RTC development may prefer to just have the on-premise version of MQA. Uh, customers who are uh, doing a lot of cloud-based development or uh, software as a service development, taking advantage of Bluemix, they would prefer to use the service as a consumable item on Bluemix. So really it's just a different uh, uh, consumption model, and of course it's a different charging metric, and each route requires a particular um, uh, enablement or entitlement to those licenses. Uh, it is part of a DevOps practice, so as uh, our customers uh, are continuously delivering high-quality mobile applications and rapidly responding to feedback, MQA is nicely fitting that bill with uh, five go-to-market features. The quality feedback that we're going to talk about here, which is all around the user sentiment analysis, uh, but also the ability to take apps and distribute them to testers using over-the-air build distribution. And then the three, four, and five features, which do require uh, a little bit of instrumentation, that is adding some SDKs into your application, some lightweight SDKs, support the ability to do in-app bug reporting, that's the shake the phone feature, uh, crash log reporting, which is when your app crashes, uh, and an automatic uh, log would be generated, or uh, in-app user feedback, giving the users the ability to express feedback prior to expressing this sentiment publicly on an app store. So uh, all of these features were, uh, once again, uh, highlighted in the prior DeveloperWorks 
study group, including some detailed instructions on how to do instrumentation. And I'll also provide some links a little bit later uh, uh, to uh, help you guide you down that path as well. So uh, it, it's always a wonderful uh, time when we can show customers adopting and using um, our products here at IBM. Um, you know, and Tangerine Bank is one of our first customers to purchase and adopt MQA. Uh, in this case, they consumed it through the software as a service model uh, through Bluemix. And the link for that public case study is shown there. So you can click on that and take you to the public link for that. So uh, we have lots of other customers coming online, of course, and uh, we'll be highlighting more references. So without further ado, let's get to the new features, the new client value features. And uh, the, one of the first things that uh, uh, we can uh, claim here is that we will ex we are have already extended user sentiment analysis to the UK, Canada, and Australian app stores. So if you're not familiar, uh, app stores are not necessarily just global app stores. They're actually app stores uh, per region. And so there are app stores in the UK, uh, US, Canada, and Australia. Uh, all of those, as you can come to expect, are uh, English language uh, app stores. And so the sentiment analysis now has uh, uh, capabilities to work with those app stores in the English language. Uh, for those new uh, properties. So uh, this is a great way to start working with our customers in those territories and take advantage of some of the wonderful features that we have in MQA. Uh, probably the next thing and, and uh, something we're going to give you a little bit of homework on here is, our ability, is MQA's ability to compare competitors' mobile applications. So we talked previously about how this is part of a DevOps practice, and if you haven't seen the IBM for uh, or the uh, IBM Institute for Business Value study, uh, having a good software delivery practice helps our customers outperform their competition. And this is a great way to uh, measure that effect uh, from having good software delivery mechanism in the organization. And that is just through a very simple uh, competitor uh, review here in MQA. Uh, and then finally, I'll, uh, we'll talk at... Uh, uh, about all the different dashboards that are available as well since we've had some revisions and improvements to all the dashboards. So uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to do a live demonstration. I'm going to switch over to Bluemix and perform a live demonstration of application uh, uh, comparing a mobile application using mobile quality assurance. So as I go ahead and share out my screen, I'm going to bring up my Bluemix dashboard. And I'm going to go ahead and select one of the services tiles. If you haven't added a service in Bluemix, uh, certainly you need to at least have the ability to log into Bluemix and create an account. And once you do that, you can select that uh, blue check service when you add a service. And so I'm going to go ahead and go into a service I had already previously added. And let's go ahead and add a new application in here. And I'm going to, you know, I, one of my local stores is here, so I'm going to go ahead and look at how Sears is doing in the market with their mobile application and compare that to some of the competitors. So I am going to request that MQA look at both the Android and iOS app stores. And again, some of this was covered in the prior uh, study group, uh, being able to add applications to uh, the uh, user sentiment analysis, but I'm just going to go ahead and configure this because it does not take very long, and most people I show this can do this in six minutes or less. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and select the Sears application. So MQA actually takes the name of the application, does a live query on the App Store in question, pulls out a variety of different applications, make sure you choose the right one here. I'm going to choose Sears. I'm going to go ahead and save settings. And then I'm going to go directly to the user sentiment capabilities. And once I go to the user sentiment dashboard, it's going to pull me up some more detailed information we'll get to in just a moment. But I'm going to go directly to the comparison tab. And this comparison tab immediately shows me the dimensions of quality that go around this little radar chart. Let me just zoom that out just a little bit so that it can fit on the screen. And you're also going to see an average that's what's shown in the dash line for app stores, uh, for a similar uh, or for apps in the App Store uh, against those same dimensions. So what I'm going to do now is compare Sears against Kohl's, another uh, store that is nearby where I reside. And it overlays uh, in a color-coded fashion the application uh, sentiment along those same dimensions. And I'm also going to choose Zappos. Zappos is uh, an online retailing plus um, uh, the, um, a mobile presence as well. And this is a very interesting display now where we see traditional businesses in the forms of uh, the brick and mortar Sears and Coles put in context uh, their mobile application user sentiment in context with um, you know, an upstart in this industry which is a, a complete online presence. And uh, as our customers look to, uh, you know, gain more engagement and drive more transactions with their mobile presence as part of their portfolio, having a good user sentiment is going to be really essential to having successful transactions. Clearly, uh, in this case, uh, Sears and Kohl's both have quite a number of negative ratings across many of these dimensions of quality, and we'll get into more detail of what those uh, look like, but here, from a competitive standpoint, it gives you, as an IBMer or business partner, the ability to uh, work with our clients, and it gives our clients the ability to assess the market for their competition and look for where they can grow in areas that would help drive more transactions with their customer base. So I'm going to go back now to the slides because that's it uh, really for the user sentiment compare apps feature. We're going to take you through a little bit more of the capabilities here in just a moment. Uh, but uh, your homework is to not only get access to Bluemix, but go ahead and compare uh, either if you're a client of IBM, because this is a public call, uh, compare your app with your top competitors. Or if you're an IBMer or IBM business partner, uh, select some of your clients and compare them with their top competitors. So that's the homework, uh, and we'll review that homework, uh, or if anyone has questions about that, on the next call, November 20th is our uh, next call in this fashion, and we'll uh, deliver some similar content uh, for our Australian teams as well in an Australian time zone. But we can also review any of the questions you might have uh, for your homework. So let's transition now to we've seen the user sentiment uh, capabilities here and the ability to uh, compare the competitors' mobile apps. Let's now look at the improved at-a-glance dashboards where we can look at trends, clusters, and turn reviews into actions using those different tabs, the dashboard compare, cluster, review, and stats within the mobile quality assurance. So if you were using Bluemix or MQA prior to the release just uh, two weeks ago, you would have seen a user sentiment score graph that looks a little bit like this. So we've done a little, some major improvements to uh, not only give it a fresher look, but also to get a, a more detailed look by uh, each of the attributes or quality of dimension. And so as you look at the stats tab, let me go ahead and use a pointer here. As we look at the stats tab uh, within MQA, 
it'll pull up a graph, and that graph shows us immediately things like trends over the time period that has been selected, uh, whether the application is trending upward or downward in terms of the ratings that have been entered. But not only can we see that overall uh, emphasis, but we can also see uh, and select each of these different dimensions of quality, these attributes, and look at a particular dimension and the trends associated with that. Furthermore, we can also see, as we pick into each of those dimensions, we can see these signals. Signals are the uh, keywords uh, that, that show up within the application reviews. As you know, uh, applications get reviewed with a star rating and a textual comment. So MQA does some intelligent parsing of those keywords and signals and then presents that in a breakout graph according to the uh, selection you've made here and shows it along the one to five star dimension. And, uh, and that gives uh, you the ability to show where perhaps some of the pain points might be, such as uh, these three uh, in the middle of this chart, which show that there are a number of one-star uh, ratings uh, for those particular signals that are coming up within that attribute. If you were familiar with uh, the, uh, the chart uh, previously in the prior Bluemix version and as well the what I call Sicilian pizza charts. Uh, we've again greatly simplified that to be able to pull out uh, scorecards. So you can look at those dimensions of quality uh, both against the average uh, as well as the um, uh, overall rating. And so you'll see in each of these little quality attribute scorecards with some description along with it you'll see that there, the app score uh, and rating based on those signals, and the industry average shown in that little tick mark as we have seen previously in this dashboard. Now, and then, of course, we can dive into the user sentiment, specifically into the reviews. And I, I like in this particular new feature uh, to gosh, any kind of web retailing experience you might have. So when you go shopping on a website, you might see different brands or options, and it gives you the ability to select different options uh, along the way. Well, this, is, uh, this user sentiment is fashioned uh, much like that, where we can select one or more attributes and show the reviews that pertain to those attributes. Uh, not only do we get a nice heads-up display about that, we can export that data as well to a spreadsheet format, and then, of course, we can query uh, further on the star rating that's applicable or uh, all star ratings. Doing that attribute and rating uh, and date range query gives us those signals and reviews uh, shown here on the lower right of the, uh, of the screen. So, again, we can dive into... Uh, the specific reviews that we believe might need to be uh, something we want to action into uh, our application. Now, as I go through some of the next items, I'll uh, uh, once again introduce Sanji Alwis. And uh, Sanji, are you there? Hi, Roger. Hey, thanks again for joining. And again, uh, Applause is our technology partner for MQA. And Sanji will now take us through uh, a little bit overview of some of the clusters capabilities with an MQA. Thanks, Roger. So Roger mentioned that um, uh, the program is able to analyze signals, kind of common words and common feedback uh, across reviews. Uh, what the clusters function does is it, it looks for commonalities tied to those signals and effectively helps create a very quick action item list. Uh, for app owners. So it's looking at those signals and looking for uh, repeat phrases uh, tied to releases, new functions, old functions that don't work. And then you're able to actually look at how many of those reviews are tied to clusters and then quickly create uh, an action item list. So again, very friendly to the whole uh, mobile DevOps process. Uh, I'll give you two quick examples where we see this uh, coming up all the time in terms of apps and issues tied to, to mobile apps. One is when you uh, when you uh, release a new version, and uh, you know you release a new version, 
and you'll see uh, a cluster start to grow. So it'll say, you know, uh, the, the specific feedback may be uh, work fine until the new version, or this new version is really slow, new version freezes all the time, and the cluster function will pull all of those uh, and create an individual cluster around that. And so you can immediately kind of look at that, look at how many reviews are tied to that cluster and prioritize. Uh, another uh, great example uh, within the banking and financial services world uh, is tied to mobile check deposit. This is a function that uh, all banking apps have to have these days, and uh, all customers expect it. And uh, as all of you know, it's a fairly straightforward thing. You take a picture of a check and uh, you know, uh, push the deposit uh, button on your map app, and it should uh, upload it immediately. But what we see is it's frequently uh, one of the functions that is uh, that has a lot of glitches. So if you look at the cluster tied to that, uh, you'll see signals like camera, money, uh, deposit, glitch, uh, horrible. And uh, we've seen in uh, some of the app reviews, you know, literally hundreds of reviews tied to that cluster. So again, uh, an app owner can quickly look at the clusters and say, oh, well, there's hundreds tied to this mobile deposit feature. Uh, we should definitely work on this and fix it in the next release. So, um, you know, Roger mentioned how you can quickly compare apps uh, and the compare feature. You can look at a high level how your app is performing uh, with a single score and then across the different attributes. This really uh, takes it one level down uh, and allows you to quick, uh, quickly action, uh, take action for the most pressing issues. Thanks, Roger. Excellent. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, you can um, uh, display those clusters prominently on your dashboard. So as you uh, review those, it might look something like this. Any further comments on this, Sanji, before we uh, open it up for questions? You can see the second one listed there has uh, 74. And again, clusters can be positive also. Um, so uh, the, the, uh, the second one may be actually a lot of feedback based on the better review. So you're able to differentiate between what's working, not working, and then what may be working well. Thanks, Roger. Excellent. Thanks, Sandy. So uh, now, if you have a question, uh, go ahead and hit star six, because all lines have been muted, and we'll, that just helps us eliminate some of the background noise. But if you do have a question now, please hit star six. We have about six minutes or so for questions. And uh, while we have those questions going up, uh, you, I will state you can also ask a question in the chat window, which is along the left-hand side of your meeting room, in the meeting stream, or you can hit me up on same time if you're an IBMer or have connection uh, uh, access to uh, same time, uh, hit me up there as well. So if you have questions, again, hit star six, announce yourself, and then ask a question. I also have some reference material. Once again, if you want to download the slides, go to the folder on the left-hand side of your meeting room. The first entry in this list is the 2014 MQA study group, and you should be able to download this. There are some wonderful videos, and some excellent uh, articles as well. And of course, we have our next study group session on the 20th of November. And we anticipate that by the time our last update to this study group rolls around, we'll have some additional features to announce and or take advantage of straight away. Hey, Roger. It's Marcia Knudsen. Hey, Marcia. Thanks for joining. Sure. Hey, uh, quick question. I got this the other day. I wasn't sure how to answer. Um, can you compare how this product compares to Tea Leaf and what Tea Leaf does? Absolutely.